It's a familiar story. A group of superpowered individuals come together to stop the apocalypse, and in a horrible twist of fate, their greatest enemy turns out to be one of their own. Except in this case, we're talking about Netflix's The Umbrella Academy, and this group of superheroes is anything but typical. The show's six superpowered siblings are adopted by Sir Reginald Hargreaves and raised to save the world. Yet, their difficult upbringing made them completely dysfunctional. Their skewed experiences make for some pretty amazing television, though. The Umbrella Academy delivers an experience unlike anything else. The series is a superhero saga and family drama all in one. It's also packed with crazy moments that are hard to forget. Here, we're taking the tour through the series' first season by looking at some of the most epic scenes. If you haven't seen the show yet, you're going to encounter some major spoilers ahead. Just a fair warning. The first clue we get about how epic the Umbrella Academy is happens in the middle of the first episode. After training them for years, Sir Hargreaves finally puts his teenage charges into action. The six superpowered siblings work as a team to stop a bank robbery and rescue the criminals' hostages. In the process, we get to see each of their powers in action. As the seventh sibling, Vanya, the only ordinary member of the group, watches from afar. Afterwards, Sir Hargreaves introduces the world to the new superheroes whom he dubs the Umbrella Academy. Suddenly the siblings are famous, and the world has an unexpected band of heroes to root for. One of the series' most unexpected and most unforgettable moments happens soon after the adult siblings return home. Despite being estranged for years, they all show up for the funeral after their father passes away. It's not exactly the easiest reunion though, and the wounds of the past are still raw. Then Luther, the former leader of the Umbrella Academy, blasts the classic 80s jam I Think We're Alone Now by Tiffany. And though some try to resist, soon they're all dancing in their own quirky ways in different rooms of their childhood home. And despite our initial hesitation, we can't help bopping along with them, enjoying the fact that they have more in common than they know. The epic dance party is interrupted by an even more epic beat and the moment that really gets the series rolling. Outside, a blue portal opens in the sky. At first, the siblings have no idea what it could be. drug addled Klaus, whose power is to commune with the dead, helpfully throws a fire extinguisher at it because, well, why not? Then an old man is standing on the other side. As he transforms into a child, he falls through the portal at the siblings' feet. It's number five, the member of the Academy whose power is traveling through space and time. He disappeared 17 years ago when they were 13 and hasn't been heard from since. Yet all of a sudden he's reappeared, claiming that his consciousness is decades older and that he's been to the future. Also the apocalypse is happening in a week. Awesome. Just what number five's return means is driven home when the man in a boy's body goes to get a cup of coffee over at Gritty's Donuts. Strange men sporting heavy artillery enter the shop and surround him. They instruct him to come peacefully, but number five, he's got other plans. Apparently in his time away, number five has become a brutal weapon capable of using whatever happens to be lying around to defend himself. Despite being severely outnumbered, number five uses his powers and his lethal prowess to take out his enemies. Then he extracts the tracker he's deduced has been placed in his arm and exits the trash donut shop. And he does it all to the jaunty tune of Istanbul, not Constantinople. Number five may look like an innocent kid, but it turns out he's the most dangerous member of the Umbrella Academy. Yet number five didn't start out that way. In fact, his journey from child superhero to time hopping assassin started with some simple teenage rebellion. We get to see exactly what happened at the beginning of episode two. One night, number five expressed his desire to use his powers to time travel to Sir Hargreaves. His father isn't on board with the idea though. Number five may have gotten good at jumping through space, but jumping through time is a very different thing. Sir Hargreaves doesn't think that number five is ready and forbids any further discussion. In a fit of frustration, number five stalks out of the house and walks down the street, hopping from time to time as he goes. Then he winds up for an especially big time jump and leaps into the post-apocalyptic future. Whoops. The city is reduced to ash and no one's left alive. Number five tries to jump away, but he's stuck. The only person alive in a decimated future world. 
Number five is desperate to stop the apocalypse and he has one key piece of evidence that could help, a prosthetic eye. The eye was made by a company called Meritech, so number five goes there to discover who it belongs to. It doesn't go especially well, so number five enlists Klaus in his next attempt to get the information he needs. Klaus poses as his father and they return to Meritech. This time things go a little differently because Klaus takes a stand by putting all his crazy on display. He punches number five and beams himself with a snow globe, then accuses the Meritech employee in charge of the records of hurting him and his son. It's a bonkers plan, but it works. Klaus may be unhinged, but sometimes he is shockingly effective. When number five goes to a closed department store, it's unclear what he could possibly be doing. Then he greets Dolores, the woman he shared his future with. It turns out though, that Five's lady love isn't so much a woman as a store mannequin. If that weren't odd enough, their reunion is cut short when assassins from the Temps Commission arrive to take number five out. The animal masked assassins, Cha Cha and Hazel, riddle the place with bullets. Meanwhile, number five uses all of his space jumping skills to save his mannequin and himself. And it all plays out to the sweet sounds of Queen's Don't Stop Me Now. Cha-Cha and Hazel don't manage to get their man, so they take their fight to Umbrella Academy headquarters. Number five isn't there, but the rest of the siblings are, and they're ready to take down the baddies. Diego, Luther, and Allison all defend their home turf as Vanya cowers. And where's Klaus? Freshly bathed, grooving to the music on his headphones, and completely oblivious to the chaos going on around him. The scene ends with Luther pushing away Allison and Diego as Chacha brings the house's huge chandelier down on top of him. In the process of removing himself from the debris, Luther's clothes peel off, revealing the reason for his hulking frame. His torso is no longer human. Somewhere along the way, he becomes part chimp. As if things couldn't get any weirder on this show. During their infiltration of the Umbrella Academy's home, Chacha and Hazel manage to kidnap the clueless Klaus. They torture him for information, but it isn't until they break into his stash that Klaus gets really upset. To really get to him, the pair indulge in his chocolate bar, completely oblivious to the fact that it's a special treat. So when Klaus tells them about Meritech and they go to destroy the place, they're both high as kites, and it makes their serious work a complete blast. They dance and they giggle as they trash the evidence and then light the whole place on fire, jumping around among the flames. It's clear from the beginning of the series that Allison and Luther have unresolved feelings for each other. They've held a torch for one another since the time they were children. Despite their clear connection, they could never admit it. And then Allison left, and Luther stayed behind and their lives took very different paths. Sparks flew when they finally reunited, and with the world in peril, Luther finally expressed what he's always felt through a fantasy dance scene complete with evening wear and twinkly lights. The pair finally communicate what they should have a long time ago. And then time rewinds, and they forget all about it. But we're still rooting for these two to work it out. Poor Vanya is shocked and horrified by the revelation that she has awesome powers. After a lifetime of believing she's unexceptional in an exceptional family, it's a lot to take in. Vanya doesn't make the discovery by accident though. The whole thing is engineered by Harold Jenkins, a man who poses as Leonard Peabody to get close to Vanya. He isn't the awkward, smitten suitor that he seems. Really, he's been obsessed with the Umbrella Academy his whole life and is using the vulnerable Vanya to get his revenge on them. Allison attempts to warn Vanya, but she refuses to believe the one person who's ever thought she's special could be lying to her. Then she finds evidence that what Allison told her is true. She confronts Leonard and he throws every insult he can think of at her, playing on all of her insecurities. He's trying to redirect her emotion-fueled powers back at her siblings, but he only succeeds at getting her to direct them at him. She uses him as a human pincushion as every sharp object in the room swirls around him and then lands in him. Honestly, we can't say that we were sad to see this despicable character go. Just like the season premiere, the season finale of the Umbrella Academy is full of spectacular moments. One of the first happens when Vanya breaks out of the cell her siblings trapped her in. Powers fully charged and set to destroy. 
Vanya channels all of her hurt, anger, and betrayal at a lifetime of being told that she isn't special into her powers. Her eyes turn white and she becomes an avatar of rage. She walks through her childhood home and every room holds a reminder of how she was treated as a child. And she trashes them all. Finally, she's confronted by Pogo, the family's loyal chimp butler. He distracts her as her siblings escape. Perhaps he's hoping to reason with her. But when he admits to knowing that Sir Hargreaves suppressed her powers, she turns on him as well. Vanya takes Pogo out just before reducing the whole place to rubble. In the process of escaping from Vanya's wrath, Klaus learns something very valuable about his powers. Now that he's sober, the deceased can manifest themselves through him. That means Ben, the only member of the Umbrella Academy to lose their life on a mission, is back in the game. It turns out this becomes crucial when the family goes to the theater where Vanya is performing with the goal of subduing her. The Temps Commission have sent a battalion of masked agents to stop the siblings from interfering with Vanya and her supercharged powers. The agents pin the Umbrella Academy down in the theater. Things are looking pretty hopeless. None of them have the powers to go up against that much artillery. Then Klaus remembers what Ben can do. Using Klaus to impact the real world, Ben uses his powers to release deadly tentacles from his abdomen. And to the surprise of everyone, he takes out all of the people threatening them. Even though the Temps Commission is no longer a threat, Vanya still is. Her powers seem to grow as she continues to play her violin. Massive energy surges through her and her clothes turn white. Knowing there isn't much time left, the Umbrella Academy agrees to attack Vanya from all sides in the hopes that one of them might get to her. Luther, Diego, Klaus, and number 5 rush at her. Vanya catches them all in tentacles of energy and suspend them helplessly above the ground as she chokes them. Then, Allison approaches an unaware Vanya from behind. She aims a gun at Vanya's head, but can't bring herself to take out her sister. So Allison fires a shot just to the side of Vanya's head. The sound startles Vanya, disrupting her powers and redirecting the massive amount of energy she contains into the sky. For a moment, the siblings believe they've saved the world. Vanya's collapsed and her energy's been blasted away. Then they realize Vanya's energy hit something crucial to life on Earth, the moon. The blast broke a big chunk of the moon off and it's hurtling towards Earth, leaving mere seconds before the apocalypse comes. With no time to spare, number five suggests that he takes them all through time so that they can live and try to stop the apocalypse once more. The siblings agree and join hands, including Ben. As number five taps into his powers, they all de-age to their 13 year old selves and vanish. That's our rundown for the most epic moments from the Umbrella Academy's first season. We can't wait to see what happens in season two. What's your favorite epic moment from the show? Are there any we forgot? Hit us up in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.